hello guys welcome back to the series of tutorials on C++ I am Deepak Kunyal and in this tutorial I am going to show you practical implementation of function overloading and function overriding uh, but before that I will start with this uh, github thing to you as you know that Hacktoberfest is going on and you are also taking part in that some of the people have sent me some pull requests on my this Hacktoberfest 2020 repository and there is one more repository I have in which I keep committing programs of C++ so you can see there are 11 contributors till now so there are a lot of programs available here you can read this description go to my youtube channel on this link and here are the ways you should create program and put in these directories which are taking part in Hacktoberfest other than this this is the main directory I recommend you sending pull request on this directory not on whoop directory right so here is the thing you can see there are a lot of other programming languages used other than C++ so and there are 17 contributors till now and 105 commits you can see all the programs here I have created a program list on which you can add some new programs these programs are being added by some other people and then there is a pattern of saving these programs so I have not seen all these programs with much detail so what you can do some of you can edit these readme files or can edit or check these programs whether these are working on all the test cases or not and if needed you can make changes and push these programs so you guys have made some changes in my whoop repository and now that has changed in my system I have also changed my system so I need to copy this thing again and now I will clone this whole directory on my system so let me open the terminal first so here is my directory I will write git clone and now it is cloning directory I will move to this directory and you can see all the programs are here right and now I will use atom editor to edit these programs now you can see this is the whole directory and it's available in my system now so what I'm going to do now I will create a file for the implementation of function overloading and function overriding and for that I can create actually two programs so let me create a file first function overloading.cpp and similarly another file which is overriding.cpp I will open the atom editor again so here you can see these two files are created I will copy these basic things from here and paste in both the files ok so I will create one class here and the class name is 2d shape so we are talking about 2d shapes here I can increase its font a bit now I am going to create some public functions and what these functions are going to do they are going to calculate area of square and rectangle so I will take a here and then it can return a cross a right and in case of function overloading name of function will be exactly same but the parameters will be different so we have to write int b here and then we can return a cross b for the variable part I have two variables here a and b 
if you want to initialize these variables you have to create a constructor here and you can make these variables a equal to maybe we are taking a from above and then b equal to b and we actually we should write it like this this and this here as well right so we are accepting these two parameters and by default these two parameters are zero so if someone don't pass these variables they will be zero right now create a driver function and now we are going to create object of this 2d shape i can write td here td and then i'm going to pass something here maybe 10 and another 120 so this is going to act as a side of square because we are calculating area of square here and here we are going to calculate area of rectangle name of both the functions is same but uh, that is uh, performing some different function now you have to use td dot area and then you have to call with some value actually I have already made functions here that has two variables but now I have to pass something from here so what I can do actually we don't need this thing I will remove this thing because we don't we really don't need this right we are just passing something here so create a blank object actually then you can pass 10 from here and in another function you can pass 10 and 20 and then you can see out this thing maybe pass some message here area of square and something like this and similarly for another one so I hope uh, this is fine now I will open the terminal and show you the output of this I can also run the side by side so now what I have to do G++ and function overloading now this has compiled successfully we can run this program now so area of square is 100 and area of rectangle is 200 we can provide new line here and similarly at this place and compile it again and run it again now it is looking better clear so this is the way you can implement function overloading now for the function writing you have to create a class parent and you need to create a class child as well and one thing to note down here is that we are talking about inheritance so it will inherit parent class clear it should have some public functions available and that function you could make void display message and this function is not performing much complex task but it is just printing hello I am base class right similarly we need to implement or override this function here so I am copying this whole thing again and I am writing derived here you can see both the functions have similar kind of or you can say exactly same signature but here these two functions have different signatures right now we have to make a driver function I will use this copy it here so when we have parent make it p and then p dot display message and similarly child c and c dot display message now you can see we are calling different functions so I will compile this program this program has compiled successfully now see the output here hello I am base class and hello I am derived class 
so I hope you got an idea that why we are trying to do function overriding because we do not want same functionality in the derived class as we have functionality in the base class if you want exactly this functionality in this class so suppose you have message like this hello I am display message so if you want exactly this thing here hello I am display message so you actually don't need to create this whole thing right you can comment this whole thing and the program will run exactly as it was working previously hello I am displaying message hello I am displaying message so this display message is actually this one clear if you try to uncomment this thing and then run this program again the output is same right but actually now this function is this one right it's not calling this one because this function has been overridden so now this function is going to be called clear so I hope you got an idea of how these function overloading and writing works and one more thing that I want to show you that I need to commit these programs and send to repository on the github so I will add these programs if I write git add dot all three programs will be added but I do not want to add this a dot out so I can do one thing I can remove a dot out first and then add these two programs or I can just add these two programs individually now one is added and another program is also added you can see the git status and these two files are in green so you can commit your message by writing git commit hyphen m and then you can pass some message here and I am writing implement function overloading and overriding so now you can see I have made some changes I will push this file on my repository one thing to note down here is that uh, from the October the master has been renamed to main but all the previous repositories that has been created before they are master they are not changed to main right so I will push origin master and now it is asking me for my username which is this and now the password which I will enter I have entered my password and now you can see all the changes are being pushed to the github I will open github and show you the changes so here you can see we have 56 commits now I will refresh this and it will have one more commit and here you go now click on this 57 and you can see the last commit is function overloading and overriding and these two files has been pushed here all right so this is how it works I hope everything is clear to you now if you have any query or doubt regarding any of these things you can write your queries in the comments and I will respond back right so see in the next video guys till then thank you so much bye bye